Hey everybody, it's Alex with Engineering Applied. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a custom drawing border in Autodesk Inventor. If you want more easy to understand and practical content like this, made by an experienced engineer like myself, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any helpful content like this in the future. If you're looking for a specific function, check the description for timestamps. And if you don't find what you're looking for in this video, make sure you check out the other videos in my Autodesk Inventor series playlist because I know you'll find exactly what you need there. Let's get started. Okay, everybody. So here we are in our drawing template file. And in this video, we have two main objectives. Our first objective is to learn how to use our default drawing border parameters menu to change our default border style options. Okay. So I'll go ahead and just insert that there so you can see an example of that. Okay. So this is an example of one of our default borders. Of course, we can change the lettering, the numbering, and so on and so forth. And then the second objective is to cover how to sketch our own custom border using some of the sketch tools available in Autodesk Inventor. Now, before we go ahead and start creating our custom drawing borders, we need to set up our custom drawing template so that we have something to save these changes to. I'll be providing a brief summary of that process in the beginning of this video. However, if you want more information on how to create a custom template, I have a video specifically on that subject and I encourage you to watch it because it's good to know and understand how these files come into play in the background within Autodesk Inventor. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to open up File Explorer in Windows and navigate to this folder called ENUS. You'll start in your C drive or the hard drive in which you've installed your operating system, and you'll go to Users, Public, Public Documents, Autodesk, Inventor 2021, Templates, and you'll end up here in this ENUS folder. All of our base drawing templates are housed here, and this is where we'll start. Go ahead and copy the standard.dwg file here. Uh, this is assuming that you like sticking with the .dwg drawing format. If you want to use the inventor drawing format, you could do the same set of steps with this. Uh, however, if you don't have a preference, I generally recommend staying with the .dwg because it works both with inventor and AutoCAD. So after copying this, we're going to jump up a level and we want to create a folder called history. Of course, you can name this folder whatever you'd like. So within this folder that you've created, we want to paste that standard.dwg file. This does one of two things. The first thing this does is it creates a backup of the original drawing template that's used to generate new drawings. So if we ever want to revert back to the default setup, we have this available to us. The second thing this does is that within this ENUS folder, we can change this standard.dwg file, which allows us to maintain compatibility with this drawing button here in the home screen. So essentially when you press this drawing button here within this new section on the home screen, it looks for a file called standard.dwg and the ENUS folder, and it launches that and it uses that base template to generate these new drawings off of. So um, we're able to maintain the compatibility with this button and we're also able to make those changes without fear of losing that original styling setup that we had backed up here in the history folder. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to navigate back to that ENUS folder and double click on standard.dwg. So this is one way to launch the file. Another acceptable way to launch this file is you can go into Autodesk Inventor, use the open command, and you'll navigate to that same ENUS folder and launch that standard.dwg file from here. OK, if you try to launch it anywhere else, you may not be opening the actual template file and your changes will not be saved. OK, so this is really critical. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and use the open command. We'll go back to that ENUS folder and we'll launch it from here. OK, so we'll just click on standard.dwg and open. Now pay attention to the name of the file here at the top. Notice how it says standard.dwg. This is really important. If I open this file incorrectly and click something like um, if I went to the advanced menu and double clicked on standard.dwg here. So let me close this other instance. If I click on this here, I want you to see the top. See how the top says drawing one. So this is a blank new drawing that's based off of that template. So it's still using that template file. However, it's not actually editing the template file. OK, so again, we want to close this one. This is not the correct one. And uh, let's go back to open and let's actually open it from here. So standard.dwg open. And here we go. We are actually editing that template file now because it says standard.dwg at the top. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and exit out of my standard.dwg file because I actually don't want to make changes to this particular template because I already have it set up the way I want it to be set up. So uh, what we'll do is you'll continue working out of your standard.dwg, but I'll work out of custom template and custom template two on my end. Okay, so I'll go to open. I'm going to open up my other template for this video. So let's go ahead and start off by learning how to manipulate our default border and changing that default border using the parameters menu. The first thing you want to do is you want to go up to the drawing resources folder in the model browser, open that up, and then you want to go down to your borders folder. OK, so you'll only see default border. I went ahead and created this custom border. So this border that you see here is my custom four by four border. So that means it goes up to four horizontally and four sections vertically. OK, so what you'll want to do first is you want to go under a sheet one and yours will say default border. So yours will look more like this. OK, so you'll likely start out with something similar to this. So what you'll want to do first is you'll want to right click on default border under sheet one and you want to click delete. OK, so what that does is it removes that default border from the sheet itself. Then go under the borders folder, right click on default border there and go to insert drawing border. Now we get our default drawing border parameters menu that pops up. Now let's go ahead and step through all of these options found in this menu. Before we continue on, let's go ahead and expand this menu by clicking these two arrows in the bottom right hand corner. Now we have additional options available to us. Starting in the top left hand corner, we have the ability to change the number of horizontal zones we have on this sheet along with the labeling. OK, so the horizontal zones were those letters that you saw at the bottom of the sheet. So I'll leave a number four there and just click OK. So we have one, two, three, four horizontal zones that are numbered. OK, and then vertically, we have one, two, three, four vertical zones that use the alphabet. OK, so um, this is typically how most drawings will be set up with some number of zones horizontally and some number vertically. Of course, the larger sheet you want to use, um, you might want to actually use more zones to specify the areas on those sheets. OK, because sometimes when you get into a larger drawing size, like a size E or size F, um, you need to get a little bit more specific or have more zones so that you can indicate a specific area on that drawing. OK, so let's go ahead and go back into our border parameters menu by right clicking on default border. And uh, we'll actually need to delete this from the sheet first. Right click on default border, insert drawing border. OK, so let's open this menu back up. So, of course, you can change your horizontal and your vertical zones as previously described, and you can change the label. So horizontally, we have them numerically labeled. OK, so we saw numbers along the horizontal axis. You can change it to alphabetical or you can remove the labels altogether by selecting none. And this can be done for both the horizontal zones and the vertical zones. Moving down into the left, we have our text style section where we can change the style of our text along the horizontal and vertical borders. So um, by default, it's set to by standard. So if we leave it on that and hit OK, this is what it looks like. So the numbers and letters are of a smaller font size. I believe this particular font size is 0.12 inches. Um, and this is based on the ANSI standard. Now let's go ahead and delete default border. Go back into this menu. OK, let's try the next option, label text, and we'll hit OK. Now you notice the numbers and letters are much larger. OK, so if you prefer to have larger numbers and letters along the border of your sheet, you have this option available to you as well. Now let's go ahead and delete this once again. We'll go back into insert drawing border. All right. And our last option is note text. And when we click OK, you'll notice it's a small font size. So uh, if you prefer that condensed font size, you can use this as well. Delete this one more time. And let's go back into insert drawing border once again. We'll go ahead and expand this menu once again. And let's take a look at this label zones from set of options here. So by default, it's set to bottom right. So if we're to hit OK, notice how the numbering and the lettering starts from the bottom right hand corner. So we have one, two, three, four moving left and we have A, B, C, D moving up. All right. So let's take a look at the other options. So we'll delete this, go back into insert drawing border, expand the menu. Now let's try the top left. We'll hit OK. Now we have A, B, C, D starting from the top left and we have one, two, three, four starting from the top left. So depending on your preferences, you have that option available to you as well. Let's delete that and go back into our menu once again and expand it so we can move on to the text layer section. 
Within the section, we can change the text layer that we want to use for the numbering and the lettering along the border. So I went ahead and created a custom layer as an example. So um, how I did that was I went to the Manage tab up here at the top, and I went to the Styles Editor. OK, and so once you open that, you want to go down to this tab that says Layers, and you want to expand that. And uh, you can just click on any of these options. I went to New, and I created a custom layer. So I hit New. and um, I'll just rename this to custom layer two. All right. And then what you could do is you can change the color of that text. So if you click in this little box here, this black box, I went ahead and just changed it to red. So I'll just do that again. OK, and I'll hit OK there. So now we can hit save here at the top and then save and close. When we go back into the default border menu, we can change that text layer to our custom one. So I'll just change it to custom layer two and hit OK. And as you can see here, all of the lettering and numbering is in red. So you could do all sorts of uh, different things by editing or creating new styles and then setting a new text layer. Now, on a side note, if you'd like to delete a custom layer that you've created, all you have to do is delete your border first, go up to the styles editor once again, go under the layers section, and right click on the custom layer that you want to delete. So uh, make sure you don't accidentally delete something you don't want to. So any of these stock layers, make sure you don't delete those. Right click on your custom layer that you want to delete and go to purge style. Click OK and then save and close. We're now back in our border parameters menu. And uh, now let's take a look at the delimit zones by section. So by default, it's set to line. So when I use this option, all of these zones are divided by little lines, OK? All right, so let's see the other options. So if we go back into this menu and select arrowhead, instead of little lines that separate these sections, they're all little arrowheads, OK? So just depending on your preference there, you have those two options available to you. Let's take a look at what else we have here. Moving to the right, we have our line layer section. So just like the text layer, we can create custom styles and layers for our line element along this border. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll click Cancel. We'll go up to Styles Editor. And uh, within our Layers menu, I'll just create a new one. And I'm going to call this Custom Line. We'll leave it as the color black, but we'll change our line type. So I want this to, instead of being continuous, let's do a dash dot. And uh, let's change our line weight to something a little bit thicker, maybe 0.039 inches. We'll go ahead and hit Save and Save and Close. We'll go back into our default border menu, expand this, go to this drop down, and we want to find custom line. There we go. And when we click OK, you'll see that now I have my dash dot border that I selected. OK, and notice how it also applies that to these little uh, subdivisions here, these little lines that divide each segment. OK, so that is how you create a custom line layer. Let's go back into that menu. So we'll delete that, insert drawing border, expand the menu, and let's take a look at by standard. So of course, by standard just puts the standard solid continuous line all the way around with the default line weight. Go ahead and delete this again. Insert drawing border. All right, so now let's move down to the center marks option. When this option is enabled, or when you see a little check mark inside of this box, that essentially just means that it places arrows that are centered with each side of the border, OK? But when we take a look at it disabled, so let's take a look at that. We uncheck that box and hit OK. There's no arrow denoting the center of each border. So just depending on your preference, you can select either one of those two options for that. Let's go back in here and moving down here to the bottom of this parameter window, we can change our sheet margins. So all you have to do is change the number in each one of these boxes, depending on which margin you want to change. So let's say we want to shrink each margin down um, by a quarter of an inch. So let's do that. So I'll type 0.25 here. 0.25 here. So our top and bottom are going to be a quarter of an inch and our left and right margins are going to be half an inch. So let's go ahead and type 0.5 in both of these and click OK. Now you can see our margins are shrunk down so we have smaller margins and our borders are closer to the edges of our sheet. That wraps up everything with our default border. Now let's take a look at how we can create custom borders from scratch. 
Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to clear any existing borders off of our sheet. So let's go ahead and do what we did before. Right click on default border and go to delete. Now we wanna go up to the manage tab and we wanna go over to this define section and click on border. When we do that, it opens a sketch menu and we can go ahead and sketch our border to our specifications. One thing I'd like to go ahead and point out are these anchor points that are fixed in each corner of the sheet. So we can use these anchor points to dimension the borders off of, okay? So we can set our margins this way. So let's say for example, and I'll just exit out of this real quick. Let's say for example that we want to create a border similar to this. So I want to enclose the numbers and letters along this border. And I also wanna add a generic table of revisions that gets resized every time my border changes. Well, this is very simple to do. So let's go ahead and define our new border. Let's delete this first. Go to the define section and click on border. And now let's go ahead and start drawing up some shapes that will get us to that end result. Let's go ahead and drop this two point rectangle here. All right, now we can dimension it off of the anchor points. So I'll set this margin here on the left side and we'll set that to three quarters of an inch. We'll do the same for this right side but we're going to use a function. I want this dimension to always match this one. So instead of typing a number in, I'll just click on this dimension and hit that check mark. There we go. So anytime I change this one value, this one will change with it by the same amount. And we'll do the same thing for the top. We'll go ahead and dimension this off of this anchor point here. Okay, and I want these to be a half inch. So we'll just leave it like that. And we'll do the same thing down here. But I wanna set this equal to this dimension. There we go. Now we have the starting point for this. Now let's go ahead and create the offset that we want. So um, what I'll do is I'll just select offset and I want 0.35 inches. All right. Now we can hit OK and let's go ahead and dimension this so that it always moves properly. OK, and we'll set that equal to this dimension there. OK, there we go. And we'll do the same thing for this side. Okay, we'll set that equal to the initial dimension and the same thing down here. Okay, so now we have that set. And of course you go along and you set your lines for the segmentation. So of course, we'll just drop a line anywhere here. So the general idea here is when we set a dimension between this line and this line, for example, so when we set that distance, we want that distance to be set as a function of the total line length, okay? So the overall length of this line here at the bottom and how many segments we want on this axis. So for example, say we want four segments on our size C sheet, all we have to do is uh, set some reference dimensions. So we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll go to general dimension and you'll pick a line. So we can pick this line, even though it's already fully defined and we can click accept because when we click accept, it says, hey, this is a driven dimension. That means that this dimension cannot be changed directly. It's simply just showing a reference dimension um, based off of other driving factors. The driving factors for this line length is the margin size, okay? So anyways, we'll go ahead and set one for the vertical axis as well. All right, doesn't matter which one. Okay, so now what we can do is recall these reference dimensions as part of the formula that sets the spacing. So let's say, for example, I want to have four segments along the bottom. I can just pull this dimension here and um, we'll type in the equal sign. We'll click on this dimension and we'll do divided by four, okay? And then when we hit enter, it sets the distance that we would need to have four total segments. So let's go ahead and create some copies of this little line segment. We'll go up to copy, we'll click on the line segment, we'll uh, select our base point, and let's just go anywhere. It really doesn't matter because we're going to dimension this anyways. Okay, there we go. So now we can click done. And as you can see, we have equal spacing here in our section. So we have one, two, three, four segments. Now we need to set the spacing between these lines. So we'll go ahead and just pick up the spacing and we'll set it to be equal to the initial length, which is then driven off of this overall length. So you get the general idea. We're just trying to automate this process as much as possible so that when we change the sheet size, 
all of the border and all of the elements drawn off that border will change accordingly. All right, so skipping ahead a little bit here, I went ahead and drew up the rest of the lines and dimensioned them the same way that I did this one. So here on the vertical axis, I referenced this overall dimension, divided that by four total segments. That way, this dimension is always driven off of this total length and how many segments I want, okay? And uh, so these lines on the top, I just drew lines and set them to be vertically constrained to the ones down here so that they always follow these ones. And then the same set of operations for these horizontal lines on this side. So I set them to always be horizontal to these lines so that... Um, only these lines here and these lines here have to change and these ones and these ones follow. So again, just automating as much as possible. So let's go ahead and click finish sketch and let's go and save a custom name here. So I'm just gonna call this custom border video. All right, so I'm gonna click save there. Now you can see in our borders folder, we have our new custom border. And of course we can insert that and see what it looks like. All right, so there we go. So now we have the starting point for our custom border, but let's go ahead and take a look at this little error here in the bottom right-hand corner. As you can see here, the border slightly overlaps the title block. This is an easy fix. All you have to do is go back into your custom border. So remember, you have to delete it off of your sheet before you can edit it. Now let's go back into the custom border by right-clicking and going to edit. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to designate this point here as a snapping point for the title block. So all you have to do is hover over the point of interest that you want to use to snap your title block to. So I'll just click on that point there. Then you wanna go up to the format section here in the ribbon. So in your sketch tab, go all the way to the right under format, and you wanna hover over this option here. So this is connection point grip. You want to make sure that this is highlighted in a blue box, okay? So that means that this point is now a connection point grip. We can click finish sketch, go to yes to save those edits. And now when we insert this custom border back in, it snaps to this interior point as opposed to the exterior point. Now let's go ahead and try to resize the sheet to see what happens with the border. So if you hover over sheet one, right click and go to edit sheet, you can change the size of your sheet on the fly. So let's go ahead and change this to a larger size. Let's change it to size E. And as a side note, you can also change the location of your title block by clicking each one of these buttons. So if you want your title block to be in the bottom left-hand corner, you can click this little button here top left hand corner here and so on and so forth. And you can also change the layout of your sheet between landscape and portrait. So we'll go ahead and leave it in the bottom right hand corner. And um, let's go ahead and change this to size E. We'll click OK. Now, even though the sheet increases in size, um, all of my margins stay the same. And the segments here have been sized automatically. So that is why I was uh, emphasizing the automation of those formulas so that you only have to change one parameter at a time. You don't have to go back and change everything manually anytime you want to change your sheet size. So let's go ahead and revert this back to a size C. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the other things that we can add to our border. So of course we need to add the letters and numbers. So let's do that now. We'll delete this, go back into our custom border, edit, and like these lines that we've placed here, you can place text. So let's go ahead and do one example of that. So I'll just drop this here. I'll type a letter A, okay? And uh, let's change the size. Actually, no, we'll leave it 0.12 inches. Now, you wanna think about the anchor points for your text fields so that you can dimension your text appropriately. So let's say that we want this text centered in this field. Well, let's go ahead and center justify it and justify it towards the middle so that our anchor point for this letter resides in the middle. So if you look closely, there's a little dot here in the middle that we can select and dimension off of. So let's do that now. First of all, we can recall the dimensioning of this offset. So let's do that. We'll click that dot and that dot. Drop this somewhere over here. This is fine. Now let's find our um, offset dimensions for this. So here we go, 0.350. And of course, we want to divide that by two. All right, so there you go. That is the um, vertical spacing for this lettering. Now we need to space it centered to this segment here. So what we can do is we can take this dimension here and divide that by two. And what that'll do is it'll center each letter in the middle of each one of these zones. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll go to general dimension, pick up this point here, 
and uh, pull off the same side. Okay, drop it there. We'll pick up this dimension and divide that by two. So that way, anytime this distance changes, this distance will change accordingly by exactly half of that, which would center this letter every time. All right, so there we go. And now let's add another letter. So uh, let's go ahead and just type text again. All right, we'll type a letter B. Uh, we'll do the same justification. Oh, and by the way, if you justify it left and top, for example, it moves that anchor point. So wherever your justification is, it'll move that anchor point. So see, it's to the top left hand corner now. So let's go ahead and change that back towards the center and middle. We'll click OK and let's move this into position. All right, let's set some constraints here. So I'll set horizontal between that middle point and that middle point. OK, so it holds that vertical position now. And uh, let's set the spacing. So we'll do the same thing as the letter A. So we'll pick up the middle point there. We'll pick up the distance from this line. And we want to set that equal to this distance. Because this distance is driven off of this divided by 2. Therefore, this always matches this. So we can just copy this one directly and click Finish Sketch. And of course, so on and so forth, you can add those um, letters, numbers accordingly in that same manner. So let's go ahead and insert this now and see what it looks like. So there we go. Now we have our lettering centered up with these sections. And if I were to change the uh, sheet size, those letters will move with it. So let's try that. Let's go down to a B size. And there we go. So everything is still centered. OK, and it auto dimensions itself. Now, before I go ahead and finish up this video, I wanted to take a moment to walk you through the finished version of this example so that you can see all of the elements and design considerations that went into completing this custom border. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the current border here by right clicking on custom border video, delete. OK, and let's insert this custom border four by four that I made. All right, so there we go. Now, this border has the same design elements. The only difference is that I put the numbers along the horizontal parts of the borders and the vertical borders have um, letters. So let's go ahead and edit this so you can see all of the elements in here. So like before, I have the separating lines that are dimensioned off of a function between this point and this inner line. So this time I'm using the inner line. It really doesn't matter just as long as you're keeping everything consistent. OK, and uh, I did the same thing with the vertical partitions. Now, in this particular version, I added a general table of revisions. So all this is is a bunch of line elements that are dimensioned to my specifications. And I didn't size these based on a function like I did the width of each segment. OK. Um, that's because I don't want the table of revisions resizing every time the sheet resizes, OK? I need to keep the same amount of space for my text entries regardless of the sheet size. So that's why I left this with a static um, length here. Let's click Finish Sketch, and we'll click No. Now, let's go ahead and resize the sheet to see what happens. Go to Edit Sheet, change it to a size E, for example. We'll click OK. And now, as you can see here, all of the segments auto resize themselves based on those formulas that I entered in for their uh, dimensions. And this table of revisions has stayed the same size because that is the way I wanted it to be so that I always have the same uh, font typed into this field. And I have that same amount of space available to me at all times. So again, just make sure that you're paying close attention to your design requirements for your custom border and that you're automating it as much as possible so that it requires um, the least amount of inputs to change all of its characteristics. One final note I'd like to leave you with is the fact that you can copy and paste your custom border. So not your default border. Notice when I right click on this, there's no copy option. But let's say, for example, we want to use our custom border four by four template. That is four segments along the horizontal axis and four segments along the vertical axis and turn that into an eight by eight, for example, where I have eight segments on each uh, end of the border. OK, so what you can do is you can right click on your initial starting border that you want to use as a template. You can click copy and then you can right click on the borders folder and then click paste. OK, and see here it says copy of custom border four by four. We can, of course, rename that by left clicking and uh, let's call this custom border. Um, eight by eight. Right. And after we've done that, let's remove this border from our sheet. 
So we'll go to delete. We'll right click on this custom border eight by eight, go to edit. And now we can go ahead and start adding additional segments and changing our formulas accordingly. So that way we can still retain our four by four version of this and also have an eight by eight version for larger sheets. So if you need to get a little bit more specific on your zones and your drawing, this would be a great way to save a bunch of time by recycling an older template and using it um, to modify it for a later use. That's all for this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Drawing Creation Module, where I showed you how to create a custom drawing border. I really hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful and that you put what you've learned into practice so you can continue developing your skills as you work your way through these lessons. Also, before you watch the next video in the series, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future content that will help you create the future you want for yourself. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out via my website contact page and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. I really appreciate you choosing to stop by and learn with me and I'll see you again soon.